<clears throat> Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's January the 30th today and we're looking at Matthew and chapter 20, the second part of Matthew 20 from verse 17 onwards. There are three passages today. Uh, first of all, the Lord Jesus takes the twelve disciples apart and on the way, on, on the journey, he, he says we're going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man is going to be betrayed unto the chief priests and the scribes and they will condemn him to death and will deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Now on this occasion nobody says a word. There's no reaction. It takes some people a number of times to hear the truth before they can take it on board. Strangely for these disciples, they never quite did take this on board. They felt as if they got the message, but didn't want to know about it. They didn't want to know about it. Before the cross, you see, these were just disciples. They were not Christians. They didn't believe in the cross of Christ. And they didn't believe in the resurrection of Christ. Even when he rose, they found it difficult to believe in the resurrection of Christ. And so therefore, they of, of course were not Christians at this stage. They were just disciples. They were just what we would call today Bible students of a Jewish rabbi. That rabbi was of course Jesus of Nazareth, the son of David. Now there came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons. She bowed down and worshipped him. And she said, I have a certain thing I would like you to do. And Jesus says, what do you want? She says, I want you to grant that my two sons may, to, may sit on your right hand and on your left hand in your kingdom. The Lord Jesus had just explained that he was going to the cross. But she is concerned about prestige. She knows the messianic kingdom is coming. She knows that these two sons will sit somewhere. So she says, if they're going to sit somewhere, I might as well ask for them to sit on the right and on the left when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered and says to her, you don't know what you're asking. She had no concept, I think about what on earth she was asking. He says, Are they able to drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptised with the baptism that I am baptised with? And they say unto him, We are able. And that's the two, that's the two disciples. Oh yes, we can do it. They had no idea. Of course, <clears throat> they did suffer. James suffered execution. John, strangely, managed to run his old life, his whole life through, and uh, died in his own bed. But he died in exile. He died a living death, cut off from his people. Now, when the ten, when the rest of them heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two disciples. Now, <laughs> We could ask, what was the mother of Zebedee's children doing there? I think the two disciples had put her up to it. I think these two disciples had said to, to her, Look, mother, we're going to be in the kingdom and we're going to sit next to the Lord Jesus. We want you to go and ask Jesus to let you do it. They were too afraid to ask him themselves outright. So they get the mother to do it for them. The Lord Jesus says this, <clears throat> he says, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. What he means is, those that are politicians amongst the Gentiles exercise dominion over the people. And they that exercise great authority upon them, but it shall not be so amongst you. 
Whosoever will be great among you, then let him be your minister. Now, <clears throat> whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. You see, the secret to power in the kingdom, the secret to positions of authority in the kingdom, the secret to being able to sit on the right and on the left in the kingdom is all about service. It's those who take the humble position. It's those who spend the night in prayer. Nobody sees that, but the Lord sees that. It's those who serve their brethren. Nobody sees that. It's done in secret, but the Lord sees it. <clears throat> Whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. He says, even the Son of Man did not come to be ministered to, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. After this, we have two blind men sitting by the wayside and we have the, the story there how the Lord Jesus heals them both. He has compassion upon them and he heals them both. Now, my password is that little phrase in verse 28. The Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. There you are. That's my little thought for the day. Look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.